everybody, it's Keith Brown, Tack Room Devotional. Guess what week this is? It's the week leading up to Resurrection Sunday. I don't know about you, but I am thrilled. I'm excited. And what I'd like to do this week is kind of take a look at some events that took place prior to the resurrection. Again, this isn't like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, what happened. But these are just randomly some, some things that happened prior to his uh, resurrection. So today, let's look at... Uh, John chapter 12 and verse 12, this is when Jesus uh, comes into Jerusalem on the back of a, a colt, a, a donkey colt, and they wave branches at him. Now, if you've never trained horses, trust me, this is not the way to train a horse. But, you know, Jesus is a great horse trainer or donkey trainer. And uh, this is what happens 12:12 12, 12, John 12:12 12, 12, the next day a great multitude that come to had come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord the king of Israel. And that's exactly what they were looking for. They were looking for a king. They were looking for a deliverer. They were looking for a savior. In fact, Hosanna even there, there even means save us. And so that's what Jesus, they expected from Jesus. Now remember in chapter 11, they had heard the stories about Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. So they started to believe, yes, this is the Messiah. This is the one that's going to come and deliver us. But notice what happens next in verse 14. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. Understand something here. When a king showed up and they were about ready to declare war, he didn't come on a donkey. He came on a stallion. He came declaring this is war. And see, this is what people were expecting from Jesus. They wanted to, him to come and say, hey, guys, take up arm. We're going in and taking this over. We're going to end this Roman oppression that's on, on the nation of Israel. But Jesus doesn't do that. Can I just tell you, Jesus came not to rule as a conqueror, but came to rule in, in love. And that's what, again, we're... He came to de declare that the kingdom of God is at hand. Well, we've talked about this before. The Bible says in 1 John that God is love. Well, if he's here to declare that the kingdom of God is at, is, is at hand, he's also to, to declare, declare that the kingdom of love is at hand. And so here Jesus is coming in a whole different fashion. You know, the uh, donkey was actually an animal that declared peace rather than war. And so when a, when a king came in on a donkey, he came in declaring that there's peace in the land. And so here all of a sudden Jesus shows up and they're saying, no, 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 that's, that's not what we want. We want this oppression, this uh, rule of, of Rome off of our back. Goes on to say in verse 16, his disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. Therefore, the people who were with him, when he saw Lazarus, um, uh, when he called Lazarus out of his tomb and raised him from the dead, bore witness. So see, these people are all there. They had seen him do these mighty miracles. Verse 18, for this reason the people also met him because they heard that he had done this sign. So there's a great group of people there specifically looking for Jesus and looking for him to, to again, call him to arms. Verse 19, the Pharisees therefore said among themselves, you see that you are accomplishing nothing. Um, look, the world has gone after him. In other words, uh, they were finding out that they were losing control of this, this mob, that they were actually going to follow Jesus instead of them. Verse 20, now there were certain Greeks among those who came to worship at the feast. Notice the Greeks were, the Greeks were there too. Those were Gentiles. This shows us that the Gentiles were included in this plan of salvation all along. That's good news for all of us who are Gentiles. Um, and they came to Philip who was with, uh, from Bethesda of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. These Gentiles were interested as well as the Jews. But Jesus answered and said, The hour has come 
um, that the Son of Man should be glorified. Now they're excited. Now they're thinking, oh boy, this is when he's going to call us to arms. But look what he says. Most surely I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. What are you talking about, Jesus? Let's take up arms. What are you talking about, death? We're not talking about death here. Well, Jesus was sharing a principle of the kingdom of God. And that is, is if a seed is sown into the ground, it dies. But when it comes back up, it produces many. And he was showing that his death was going to produce many just like him. And they didn't want to hear that. And so it was very discouraging to him. And then he goes on to say, he who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. They don't want to hear that. All I'm telling you is this. Jesus came to rule in a different way than other conquerors and other kings and and, and leaders were doing. He had come to show this new kingdom has a new way of ruling. I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional. Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray God, that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.